My new what? You heard me. I'm your new landlord. I own the place now. Bought it fair and square from the guy. Harley hummed in a venomous tone, dropping himself against the office desk. Why the hell would you do that? I asked, getting ready to ball out the door. What's going on here? Riz asked, walking around uh, through the corner. Why the what? She shouted when she noticed Harley. She says she just bought the place. What? Why? She was literally just trying to kill you. I know, I don't get it either. I replied, not taking my eyes off Harley in case she tried something. Ahem. Harley interrupted, waving us back in her direction. Yes, I did buy this place. Why, Why though? though? Me and Rissa asked at the same time. Well, because why kill you when I can make your life miserable? She answered with a grin. And uh, if you don't mind me asking, where did you get the money just to buy an apartment complex? I asked, curiosity slowly starting to take the place of alarm and terror. Not that it's any of your business, but I borrowed it. Borrowed? From who? I asked a little louder, and for some reason, in an intrusive tone of concern. Well, if you must know, I asked for a loan from Dirty Work Inc. And they just gave it to you after you tried to kill me? I barked. Yes, they tend to be pretty impartial most of the time. Okay, wait. One more question. Have you, like, ever ran an apartment complex? Or any kind of business before? I asked, a thought starting to form in my head. Well, no. But how hard can it be? She replied indignantly. I'm not stupid. Okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait. So let me get this straight real quick. You're telling me you've never ran a business before, but you took out a loan for an ungodly whatever amount, I'm sure this all cost, from Dirty Work Inc., the sketchiest people to ever crawl out from under a rock, just to take the piss out of me? I questioned, the look on her face done to change from one of triumph to one of annoyance. Yes? So what? <laughs> I started to bellow so loud my ribs hurt. No, no, nothing. Just, just take it easy on me, okay? <laughs> I added, laughing my way out of the door. Both Harley and Rissa looking dumbfounded. The hell was that about? Rissa asked when she caught up with me. If Harley was half as smart as she thought she is, her brain would be three sizes too big for her head. I answered. Okay, look. Those dirty working guys ain't gonna let her off if she doesn't pay them back. I know guys like that. My brother? Owed a shitload of money from a bad bet one time. The guys he owed found me and broke my leg with a Louisville slugger. Took me forever to recover. And as bad as those guys were, those dirty work in guys, they're way worse. And so that means... It means she doesn't have a clue what she's doing. Julie... I paused for a second to get myself together. Julie used to talk about how hard it was to keep this place up and running. Han did all the maintenance and she took care of the finances. And I know for a fact Holly can't do any of that shit. Just watch. You'll see. Look, she even forgot about the rent. I giggled holding up the cash I stashed in my pocket. Well, okay. I'll stay calm if you are. But are you sure you don't just want to... Find somewhere else now? Risha asked. Especially with all the history here. And just tell the captain and everyone else where she is. I'm not going to miss this for anything, I told her. No, this is worth the little bit of trouble she's going to be able to cause before a world collapses in on her. Just think about it. She's so hard on this idea. She didn't even think about me just shooting Hook a text about her. If you say so... She relented as we finally walked into the apartment. That looks like it felt great. She added as she watched me plop down on the couch with a little relaxed sigh. Oh yeah, you don't feel, do you? I asked. 
Not like physical stuff. Emotions, I think. But not when I sit or walk or anything. Jeez, that must suck, I mumbled. It's not great. I'm sorry. Shut up, it's not your fault, dumbass. She scolded. I was gonna say something back, but my phone started to ring before I could. And then, when I looked down at the screen, I realized it was a call that I had been dreading. Hello, Adeline. Don't you hello me! Sorry, I said once my ears stopped ringing. I know what you're going to say, and- Pay cut. Uh, what? Pay cut? I choked. Yes, pay cuts. Lots and lots of pay cuts. She hissed. You're lucky you're not a lawn ornament right now. But I'm not going to do that. I'm not even going to fire you. But you're getting another massive pay cut until you pay off the mountain of favors I had to cash in to bail you out of this mess you got yourself into. Do you know how hard it is to make a case move that fast? It's hard, Jose. It's very hard. I understand, Miss Adeline. Is there anything else? Yeah, it's like a puppy who just pissed at the carpet. Oh, yes, actually. She said her tone changes that weird chip of one of hers so fast it was creepy. I had the graphics department come up with some new designs for t-shirts. We even did one with an orange chain ring from a bicycle. I really like that one. And the fabric is different. It's supposed to be more comfortable and breathable. Tell me what you think. How am I supposed to- Check your front door. She interrupted. So I walked over to the door and pulled it open. And right on the ground in front of it was a plastic bag just sitting there. Kind of freaked out, I looked around to try and see if I could spot who left it there. But nobody. Okay, that's unsettling, I thought to myself as I bent down to pick it up. There's a couple in there. Just wear them around and tell me how you feel about how you like the graphics. Wait, am I just your own personal guinea pig? Is there a problem with that? She asked, a little bit of venom dripping back into her voice. Um, no. Happy to help. Bye, Adeline. Click. <sighs> that was painful. Brissa groaned. You see why I want to watch Harley have a breakdown now? This is what I gotta deal with because she had to drag me into all this shit. And the bike... Let's not forget about my old bike. The next few days passed by pretty smoothly. Until one day I was outside cleaning and oiling the chain on my bike when Harley comes sprinting at me. Oh Jesus! I yelled snatching the wrench out of my bag and getting ready to take a swing. Did you know you had to pay tax on a property you own? She wailed at me. Yeah. It's called property tax, I answered suspiciously. Did you not? No, and I've got all kinds of bills coming due and I have to rent. I need rent. No, oh, thank you. She shouted, snatching the cash I was already holding up by then out of my hand and running to the next occupied room, slapping a rent due notice on the door. What did I tell you? I asked Rissa with a shit-eating grin before starting back on the chain. After that, I was having a blast watching Harley descend into madness until I was leaving the apartment to get to work on deliveries. But as I stepped out the door, Hands where I can see him, shitbag! A voice shouted into my ear something cold pressed against my temple. A gun. Someone was holding a gun to my head, of all things. This is how I go out. Inside now! The man demanded, shoving me backwards and closing the door behind us. What the hell, what the fuck do you want? I screamed in panic. You owe too much cash to the wrong guys, buddy. Looks like your number's up. The man said with a New York accent thicker than mine told me, leveling the gun at me. M money I don't- Oh, fuck me. No, no, no. I'm not who you think I am, guy. Please trust me. My wallet is in my backpack. I told him, turning around so he could get to it. My ID's in there. Just check it out and see. I begged. How do I know this ain't a fake? He asked, glancing back and forth between me and the picture. You look just like him except for the gross scars and shit. You looking for my brother? I explained, my hand still in the air. My identical twin brother? I swear to God it ain't me. 
I've had to deal with bullshit like this for years. Guy broke my leg thinking I was him once. Please, you gotta believe me. So where's this guy? The man asked, throwing the wallet on the coffee table. I don't know. He's been missing for months. He disappears all the time. Because, well... I trailed off, gesturing vaguely at the present situation. This shit! You're serious, aren't you? The guy asked, finally lowering the gun. Oh, well... My bad, I guess. He apologized before turning and just walking out the door like nothing happened. What the actual fuck? I groaned, flopping down on the couch. Bing. I banged my fist against the rusted metal door in the alley. Hurry up so I can get this over with, I barked. A few seconds later the door creaked open as the container poked out. I snatched the plastic box out of the hand and set a marker for the destination. Several days had passed since the lunatic had held me at gunpoint and I was still a little on edge. Uh, well, more on edge than I usually was. Here! Yeah. I shouted, ignoring all the usual delivery etiquette for the creepy concrete place and just shoving the container into his hands. You sure you don't want to know why I- No! I answered before he could finish, swinging my leg on my bike and riding off without looking. Just make the damn Les Grossman movie! The rest of the night went fairly normal. I even got to stop by Relic's place when he made an order. On my way home, I heard my phone beep. It was a text from Destiny. I forgot I'd sent her the text earlier that day asking about how her, her sister, and her, uh, Dracula were doing dealing with fate's death. We're getting there, her message read. So I rolled into the parking lot for a second to text her back. Okay, let me know if you guys need anything, I told her. As I put my phone back into my backpack, I noticed some dumpy guy lurking around the parking lot looking kind of suspicious, but spending so much time around all the nightly bumpy creatures and having a gun pressed in my head a few days before, it didn't give me the willies like it probably would have before. Not my problem, I whispered as I pedaled away into the night. The next few days were pretty average too, you know, relative to the base level of nonsense that is my day to day, but nothing unusual. That was until the day Destiny came over to finally hang out together again. Hey, question. Where is your bike? She asked, looking around the living room where I normally sat. Where is my what now? I responded as I followed down the stairs behind her. Where the hell is it? I screamed at the top of my lungs as I crashed through the front door. Jose, calm down. I'm sure we can find it. Destiny said trying to console me, but it didn't work. My eyes landed on Harley in the distance near the office, and by then I was already on the warpath. You! I bellowed. What did you do with my bike? I kept shouting, storming away. Your bike? I haven't touched the stupid thing. I haven't even had time to. She stopped looking over my shoulder, Destiny's direction. That's when I realized I forgot to tell her about Harley buying the place. What is she... Doing... Here! She growled from behind me as I slowly turned to face her. Her face was, for lack of a better word, painted, evil. All the cuteness and pretty was long gone and all that was left was 100% demon as she cut her eyes at Harley. Destiny, d don't... It's a long story, but I can explain... Let's just go inside, I raised my quivering voice, directing the last part more at Harley as I stood between the two making a remarkably flimsy barrier out of myself. I have no idea how I got everyone through that without blood being shed, but I finally got Destiny back inside and let's call it somewhat calmed down, at least enough to where her face wasn't making my knees shake no more. Then I went on to explain the situation. She seemed a little better when she heard that I was letting everything play out to watch Harley lose her mind trying to keep her head above water. So she said she'd behave under the condition that I kept her up to date on Harley's deteriorating mental state. 
After that whole conversation, we both ended up falling asleep on the couch, somehow completely forgetting about the bike situation. But the second I woke back up... My bike! I still haven't found my bike. God damn it! I yelled, jumping off the couch and tearing out the door. We spent all day driving around in Destiny's... Pink hearse, looking for my bike or any sign of it. But nothing. We had the pawn shops. Nothing. Bike shops. Nothing. By the time we got back to the apartment, I was almost in tears. Not so much because of the bike, but... Rissa, she wasn't just my bike ghost. She was like my best friend at that point. It's going to be okay, Destiny told me. How about tomorrow we go see if the dirty working guys will help us look for it? Okay, I mumbled, resting my head on her chest. Art, did you just wipe your nose on my shirt? The next morning, a knock on the front door woke me up. Still gloomy, I slowly shuffled over to the door and turned the knob. It was Mark from Dirty Work, Inc. Oh, hey, we we're gonna come see you guys today. Did Destiny already call you or something? I asked, wiping the crud out of my eyes. But before he answered, I heard a voice speak from behind me. It was a familiar voice, but also not somehow. Please don't be mad. I tried to stop them. I really did. Then Mark moved aside so I could see... the pale complexion and stitch, mismatched skin didn't make it any harder to tell who it was. J Julie? No. It's me, Rissa. Well, you're kind of right, I guess.